So we'll commence meeting of December 18th, 2023. It is 7.02. Um, we'll start it with a, uh, a roll call. Margaret Sweet? Here. Nick Sykepatis? Here. Kevin Estes? Here. And Kevin Mello? Here. And Chris O'Neill is here. Uh, first item on the agenda is administrative approval not required plan. PAANR 23-21-121 Potter Street. Assessors map 138, lot 132, and 131. Christine? So this one is for the creation of um, three estate lots from two, um, two regular lots, general lots. Um, we do have the estate lot covenant. We have the Mylar, the corrections that we had asked, to, or the revisions that we had asked for have all been made. Um, I see that the engineer is on for this one. I don't know if there's anything he'd like to tell you in particular, um, but I don't see that there's no reason why you uh, cannot move forward with this one. I don't know. Peter, do you want to say anything? No, I, I don't have anything to add. I just thought I should be here. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty straightforward, Christine. Uh, any questions of the members? So the only other thing I should point out as part of this, each of the estate lots is proposed to be developed with two family residences, um, mm -hmm. requiring that the the um a little bit different amount of of with the zoning changes for the general residence district that it's in. But again, I don't see any issues with it. Mm -hmm. okay. I make a motion to approve. Uh, motion made by Margaret Sweet to approve. I'll second that. Uh, Kevin Miller with a second. Margaret? Yes. Kevin Miller? Yes. Kevin Estes? Yes. Nick Sycopatis? Yes. And Chris O'Neill is yes also. Thank you. So Pete. we will get the um, Mylar signed over the next couple of days and then reach out to you so you can come and pick it up or have somebody pick it up and record it at the Registry of Deeds. And that and the estate lot covenants. Okay, Peter? And uh, happy holidays to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Agenda item number two has been uh, continued, Christine. So we have had a request to continue. So um, by the engineer for the owner, um, th this is for the release of a lot from Performance Covenant. It's for 10 Avis Street Assessor's Map, 128 lot, 14-10. Um, they re requested a continuance this afternoon because of con uh, connectivity issues. So you just All should right, make next. a do that but well, you should make a next, motion next meeting date is when the next meeting date is january 8th whoa move to continue this to january 8th uh motion made by kevin estes second second by nick psychopatis uh kevin yes uh nick psychopatis yes uh margaret sweet yes and kevin mel yes Okay, Chris O'Neill is yes. Uh, number three. January 8th, 2024. Uh, 2024, sorry. Yeah. Uh, item number three, release of surety, Dartmouth Business Park 2, Commerce Way, Assessor's Map 61, Lots 5 520. Christine? Um, so this one here, the owners of this. Um, the business park that we've been dealing with over the years have requested um, that the surety be reduced. They have have it with a, a letter of credit, an irrevocable letter of credit. Um, uh, we're going down quite a bit. We're going down rough from two hundred and twenty three thousand three hundred thirty six dollars and ninety six cents down to. Um, twenty two thousand. $680.58. I did receive a surety estimate from DPW on um, December 8th. I had did meet with um, Jim Lanigan regarding the project. He is the one that will be bringing, um, bringing the letter forward. So what I would need you all to do is to approve the reduction down to the 22 number. And um, I will have you all sign the, the treasurer's office going forward, watch you all to sign off on these type of things. And we will get the irrevocable letter of the letter of credit. Um, in the past, sometimes they have been 
um, expiring a year or two, but they're supposed to all be non-expiring. So I did not just on this one, but I, I did remind Mr. Lanigan that I would like that. And um, he was agreeable to that. Um, so um, I'm recommending that you allow him to, to uh, submit a new letter of credit in the amount of approximately $22,000. Hey, I don't know who was, I don't think anybody's on here for this one. Um, I wasn't sure. Look I, was. at it. I think it's just us. Yeah. Uh, any questions on this one for anyone? So I, I have a general question that's, that's uh, related to, to this. Uh, so DPW has told us that it's $22,000 roughly to, to, to wrap the job up. Yep. And uh, you know, costs change. And it doesn't seem that there's any kind of a timeline attached to completion of this work other than the incentive of the lot release, because I, I assume we have a, a lot in here somewhere, right? So um, what they've done at the bottom, they've changed their estimates a little bit now. Um, so they add an annual percentage, um, a 2% annual thing. So they've added all the way from 2020 up to up to 2024, a two two percent number, um, and then they have the contingency of five percent, and then they have an engineering fee of five percent. So they've changed their things a little bit. Um, we know now that this um, the development of this is going along faster now with all of the site plan review applications that you receive. I don't know that it'll cover it. You know, if if there was an issue, I don't know that they will cover everything, but they've gotten you know, they've taken into account all of those things now. So I don't know that we could change it at this point, but maybe that is something, if you want to change that going forward. Well, my, my question was more, not specific to this individual case, but more broadly, um, how do we how do we control for the contingency that uh, building doesn't go on? And it go, you know, goes for a while, and then all of a sudden it comes time where uh, you know, somebody drops the keys. And, and again, this is not related to this particular opportunity, but where somebody drops the keys in the uh, in the mailbox and goes home. Right. And so that, we're stuck that is with an updated uh, holding. Right. So that is what happened with Gendro. So that's why they've changed a little bit more. I don't know if, if we want to have them look at other ways to change a little bit, but that's one of the reasons why they've done it this way this time is because of the Gendro estates. We didn't have enough, we don't have enough money to actually finish that one. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. like, I have no issues <laughs> with this one in particular. I'm just asking you more broadly. General. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so they're trying to tweak a little bit. Jeez, I don't know. If we're so you worry, be um, but I can ask, uh, I can't ask town council if there's anything else we could put in. Uh, I, I I don't know. What, what what are my fellow board members think about this? I think what you're looking at now, Kevin, on this particular one is uh, is the answer to your your overall question on how. Uh, and it was it was uh, brought up quite a bit at the last town meeting. How do you how do you get ahead of this? How do you get ahead of these projects and make sure if they do languish for a little bit? that we have enough um, in the account in order to cover for those um, for the inflation. So the, I, I'm glad to see this. I'm glad to see that uh, that they looked at this and brought this um, schedule, I guess, onto the estimate, um, mm -hmm. because I believe this is the first one, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is the first one that we've seen with the increase uh, to take a little bit of inflation into consideration. I think from the level on this particular one, from the level where we were to right now, significant amounts of work have been done, obviously. So um, I feel okay with this one, but I I, um, I I think this goes to your your point about how do we handle uh, the projects that languish a little bit. And this is the DPW's answer, it looks like. Okay. Uh I'll make a, well, uh, I'm sorry, maybe somebody else has. Yeah, any other questions or concerns with this? Uh, no. No. So the only thing, like I said, um, it will not take effect until I get signatures. Um, right. I'm going to draft some type of a letter together, I guess, um, for you all to sign. I'm not quite sure what the uh, what the treasurer's office wants exactly. Um, to put with the with the letter that we get from um from Mr. Lanigan, but 
it should be pretty straightforward. So, so maybe we vote on um, on the release uh, contingent upon the receipt of the letter, the yeah. non-expiring letter of credit. Maybe that's yeah. how we do it. Or, or, or just in case they come up with something different, do we want to give uh, a little bit more leeway and just tell uh, vote to approve this administratively? So he, he said that he was going to get us a letter of credit. He asked if that was okay, if we could continue to do it the same way. So I don't anticipate anything different from him. He did draft, he did show me a draft um, last week. So the, my biggest thing is the letter that I'm going to send to the treasurer's office more than anything that's saying that you all authorized it. Okay. Well, I think I think that we can approve that. I'll make a motion to um, approve subject contingent upon getting a letter from Mr. Lanigan uh, with the unexpired uh, uh, letter of credit. I, that's my motion. Okay. Motion made by Margaret Sweet. Is there a second? Second. Second by Kevin Estes. Is that who that was? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Margaret. Yes. Kevin Estes. Yes. Nick Psychopatis. Yes. Kevin Mello? Yes. And Chris O'Neill is yes also, Christine. Okay. Very good. Every time I get out of one, it it brings it back and the print is so small I have to go back and blow it out again. I think I need bigger glasses. <laughs> oh boy. Uh gender item number four, appointment agricultural commission. So um, I know that um, Sue Gaducci and a few members of the Ag Commission had asked to um, speak to, to the planning board. They had asked a couple of weeks ago and I had told them I would put them on the agenda for this. I did remind her. Um, I don't know if they're having connectivity issues as well or if they've forgotten, but they wanted to talk to you. They used to in the past meet with the planning board um, every year usually around this time of year or right after the start of the of the new year. So um, I can just reach out to her and reschedule because I don't know what, exactly what they were going to talk about. All right. Can we just check and make sure they're not in the waiting area? There is. I don't know who I have on from DCTV tonight. Who do I have on? Is it Michael? Good evening, everybody. Uh, you got Mike. Uh, there was nobody in the waiting room. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, and, we just, uh, we just popped in. Christine, if we could have something on the agenda as far as what they wish to discuss. Okay. You know, first for the public um, public record, there should be some type of notice in our uh, agenda so the public okay. knows what we're going to discuss. Okay. And also as board members, we should have some type of, um, you know, yeah. idea of what they're going to discuss. So we could... Uh, either research or look into it ahead of time. Okay. Very good. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So when you say appointment. So appointment, they just they just want they time. made an appointment as opposed yeah. to appointing somebody to something. Yeah. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Got it. So that's it for that one. I don't okay. think you need to do anything else. No, no no motion required on that one. Uh number five minutes. Um Make a Motion, we accept the minutes of December 4th, 2023. Uh, so, um, Kevin, go ahead, Christine. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that we did all receive a notice from DCTV today um, saying that there had been some issues with the um, online broadcasting or whatever of the uh, um, of the uh, meetings after the after the meetings. So um, I know there's been some problems with some departments and minutes and things like that. We haven't been having a problem lately, but they are going to take down the take down the site. And so things will be just available for the um, probably till the end of January with just uh, YouTube TV. So if anybody's looking for anything. Um, Is that you mean do you mean the um, DC TV recordings? Yes, the DC. Yeah. TV. I had trouble um, last week. Uh, getting a few to, to come right. down. So there had been, so we did all get the notice today and that they're going to be doing something with YouTube while they get the whole system fixed. Right. Okay. So now nothing, there's nothing wrong with our minutes um, right now. All right. So uh, a motion made by Kevin Mello. Is there a second? Second. 
Uh, second by Kevin Estes. Kevin Mello. Um, Kevin Estes, you were not here at that meeting. Oh, okay. I'll second so, it. Seconded by Margaret Sweet. Uh, Kevin. Yes. Margaret Sweet. Yes. Chris O'Neill. Yes. And Nick Psychopathus is. Actually, I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. He wasn't here. Kevin. I, uh, I was going to say I'm listed as uh, Kevin present. Was here. You were. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm confusing. Yeah, because yeah, well, she doesn't. Put the woman that the woman that does them doesn't put who was absent. Actually, yeah, Nick was. Nick was absent. Yeah, Nick was, was, was absent. Yeah. He doesn't put that. I'm. Out. I'm thinking I haven't seen Kevin Estes in a while, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Take a good look. Backpedal. Yeah. Backpedal. <laughs> So they're never all, had, so they're all, never had yeah. that luck in school when I was absent. They knew the Irish yeah. was out. <laughs> yeah, that's so, what it was. Uh, Kevin Estes, you're you're good. Yes. yes. Primitive. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's that's all done, Christine. Okay. All right. So those will be posted tomorrow, and you, if you're looking at meetings, you can go to YouTube TV. Yeah. Um. um next, to the cor the correspondence. I don't see anything um really earth shattering here. Kind of uh just the typical stuff from Westport and uh, Fall River. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the uh, Westport is a hot topic right now in Westport. In Westport, okay. In Westport, it's a hot topic. Um, I am concerned that if they start um minimizing or or putting restrictions on Airbnb that other communities will want to follow. Um, seems really stringent what they're trying to do over there right now. I don't know if anyone else has been following, but um, hopefully it doesn't go through. And if it does, hopefully Dartmouth doesn't follow. What are they trying to do, Kevin? Are they trying to limit the, um, the number of days or... They're, they're trying to uh, limit who can, you know, who can do it, who can rent out their houses. Um, they are trying to um, have the Board of Health issue a permit in order to uh, use your house short-term rentals. Um, you have to have one parking space per guest room on premise. Um so they're, they're really trying to take some type of control. Yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, it, it's really not a problem. I mean, from a landlord's perspective, it, it's very attractive to do short-term rentals because you don't ever have to go to housing court. But if you have a problem, it's easier to get rid of them. Um, I, but again, there's, there's a few people in town that have... Um, bad attitudes towards short-term rentals and they're trying to get their agenda pushed through is what it seems like. Um, we haven't gotten many calls in the office about rentals here. Um, we have gotten a few, I have to say, people complaining, residents, neighbors complaining about things. Usually it's got to do with parking. And I know from my experience at a previous um, uh, city that it was a major, major problem. Um, it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue anymore, even like just across the country, people seem to have figured out a, a good way to um, resolve it and come to terms, you know, or work through it. Um, so it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see what they do. I mean, but we haven't really received many, many issues here in town, many complaints here in town, a few, but not many. Right, right. The, the complaints that I recall have been more from student rentals and party houses from college students um not so much as airbnb and vacation rentals well i sent um christine and um ross uh something that was in the sipican uh daily like the dartmouth weekly about rochester they are now discussing um apartment uh you know, because a lot of people are not happy with uh, the temporary uh, uh, short term rentals because they're afraid of, they're afraid that the people that are coming there for that short term rental, uh, you know, they'll in and out and it's a neighborhood, there's children playing. 
So Christine, I'm sure will share it with the rest of us, uh, the rest of you before um, we discuss it. Uh, I picked right. that up last week. Um, I did receive it today and right. yeah, we will, we will forward it all. Um, it, the reason that Margaret had sent it is because it's related to our accessory dwelling units and this, that's why she was sending it initially. Um, and it's uh, the Merriam planning board um, had, there was an article and they're, they're looking into it. So they are having issues there. Right. It, it's, it's kind of amazing that everybody now at the same time is, is discussing the same thing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's really odd. It is odd, you know. But yeah. but I know Westport had a real problem, Kevin, uh, with one of the houses, uh, the short-term rentals. Uh, so I think maybe that made mandated this now because it was a real problem. It was all summer. And uh, you probably read about it too, Kevin, but uh, I don't know. Short-term rentals are nice, but you have to be you have to be considerate of the neighbors also. Right, right. And no matter what you have, you're going to have bad landlords that don't take care of right. their problems. Absolutely. And as a landlord, I would much rather deal with a short-term tenant problem than a long-term tenant problem, uh, both for the public, for the neighbors, and for myself, because it's much harder to get a tenant out that is not a short-term tenant. If they're less than 30 days, they don't have any rights. They don't right. have, you don't have to go to um, housing court. You get a bad tenant that's creating a nuisance in the neighborhood. And for the landlord, it could take you months, if not years, to get them out. Well, I have um, a question for you, Kevin, because you have a lot of rental units. Um, with short term rentals, is the, the background check the same? as you do with a long-term rental? Certainly not. No, absolutely not. Um, I don't do any short-term rentals. I know it's you not, don't, but not, I'm just- Not I, my business plan. Right. Um, but- uh, That's a consideration. Short, as, as, a, as a consumer, I use short-term rentals. Whenever I go away, I prefer to stay in a rental rather than in a motel or hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you will always have bad tenants one way or another, but to get rid of a bad tenant is much harder if they're not short term. Um, so it's kind of be careful what you wish for because these people that say, okay, I don't want short term rentals. Now you put a bad apple into that unit and you're calling the police every day and the landlord's calling the police every day and it takes six months to get them evicted and through the process. Um, I think it's a 50-50 though, Kevin. Really, oh, absolutely. Real opinion. absolutely. It's a 50-50. If it's a reoccurring problem, people are, I am rated as a consumer on on one of these rental sites on that we use. I am rated. So the landlord needs so to am do I. his I'm rated diligence. too. Right. right. So... They can say, okay, Kevin Mello wants to rent from me. Let's look at his record. Let's look him and see what his rating is. Right. And if I had a bad rating and the landlord still put me in, then shame on him. So no, but that chances... doesn't help the neighbors. That's the only thing. You know, well, when I you, you know, that's the force... I, I'm thinking of the neighbors in the neighborhood. That's the problem. Okay. So Margaret, if if I'm a landlord and I do a bad job on short term rentals, not mm -hmm. checking out people. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm going to do a much better job on long-term rentals? No, but uh, long-term so, rentals you get to see you get to see that person. Short-term rentals, they're in and out. You don't know who's there. And long-term rental, I mean, you correct. have an opportunity to, you know. But I'm, I'm just concerned take about the kids. So Kevin, Kevin's the kids point in the is neighborhood. the long-term renter has more rights. That's I know correct. what Kevin's point is because I'm in the business. But oh, my point right. is with the with the short-term rentals. I'm worried about, Kevin, you know, a lot of people don't do their homework for long-term rentals or short-term rentals. And that's, that's correct. Just, I'm not a so big fan be... of, uh, you know, I, I have a quick somebody question. coming in for two or three days, somebody coming in for a week, I feel a little better, but somebody coming in for two days or three days, they could be on the run. <laughs> Who knows? 
months. I mean, really. You, you, you don't know? know, but it, you know, if you rent it to them and uh, they're a convicted felon and, and you rent to them long term, once they're in and they have those keys and that whatever it is, one year lease, ten that will, it will take months to get rid of them. Where if they're short term rentals and they're that bad of a problem, it's much quicker to remedy the problem. Oh, I understand that, Kelly. I just, so, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just not sure on how I feel, okay? Yeah. Are, we making, are, we making a, right. are we making a broad based assumption, assumption that all short term renters are less desirable than long term renters? I'm just curious, like, where's the fixation on the short term and what are we using to define short term? Are we saying less than 30? Because it's the first time yes. I heard two or three day yeah. statement. Yes, less, less than 30, 30 is the definition of short-term rental. So I wasn't here last meeting, and I don't know how much discussion there's been, but I hope we preserve the integrity of some definition of short-term rental, because in opposition to what sounded like all short-term renters are more likely than not to be bad renters, we're a seaside community that has a lot of wealth, a lot of properties worth a lot of money. And I think that 30-day rental market or that 15-day rental market from May 31st to October 15th, probably brings a lot of good money into town too. Um, I'm not gonna say it's non quit around Hill, but there's a lot of beautiful properties that can attract families and or people that are looking to invest in our community. So I don't know what part of this I missed, but I, I, well, I, I think you've got a valid point, Nick. I, I think, you know, the market dictates as, as everyone knows uh, in a lot of cases, who's actually renting and who can afford to rent and what kind of problems you're gonna have. And, yeah, and just saying, I hope we can top of the scale, you event. can have just as many problems, I would assume. <laughs> but, um, just, not, not to put this off for a second, but I know we have a couple of people that came in a little bit late. Uh, Mr. Delgado? Is he muted? Yeah, yeah. Joe, you're muted. Um, I, okay. I just wanted to let you know that uh, you are number uh, three on our agenda in... Uh, we we took care of it for you. Can't hear He's he's unmuted, but um, yeah, maybe the maybe your mic's not working, Joe. I just wanted to let you know that, um, so you can uh, you can move on. Uh, we just need the what was it, Christine? The letter of credit from uh, Jimmy. Letter of credit from Jim. Yeah, and and you're all you're all set, Joe. Um, that he has from DPW. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Call the planning board tomorrow, Joe. Thank you. Um, and we do have uh, Sue Sue Guiducci. So, from what I understand, um, Sue didn't realize that um, we are not in person, that we are still meeting remotely. So she had gone to town hall. Um, she ended up reaching out to Michelle Vieira and Michelle Vieira uh, directed her to us. Um, I don't know if anybody else is on. Um, no, she's on. She's, she's on. muted she's on, though. But there's an iPhone. Right. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know who the iPhone is, if it's somebody from the Ag Commission as well. Um, it is. It's from, I believe it's Andy Burns. Burns, okay. Um, so what the planning board had, um, we weren't sure if you were going to be on or not. And um, there was a question about having um, some information with regard to, to what you want to discuss. Um, so it might be wise to, to for them to know that in advance um, so that I can put it on the agenda for the public and so that um, they'll know you know, what they're going to be talking about. So they won't be, um, you know, caught off guard or misinformed or not informed fully. So I don't know if they want to continue you to the first meeting of the new year or how they want to approach it, but. Uh, Sue, Sue, how long do you think it'll take? Um, if I can get my screen to work, um, I can stay on. Um, okay, there it is. Um, I wanted some additional input from anybody else. I know that we were waiting, also waiting for Fred Dabney, but I believe it's just, um, I know that Andy was going to try and do it from his phone because he, I had met him up at the town hall. But that being said, 
Um, we had um, we had a conversation. The AgCom had a conversation with Claudia Arsenio, who is the um, applicant uh, who wants to grow marijuana up on Old Fall River Road, and she asked us if we could have a conversation with your board about changing the zoning so that it could read uh, and somebody from the, someone else from the AGCOM could correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the um, distance from a resident, a neighbor, okay, a, di a distance of 500 feet from the facility to the to that neighbor as opposed to the way it's the, the way the language reads now which i don't have in front of me um uh oh because because she wants to be able to live where she's obviously because she wants to be able to live where they're manufacturing the marijuana and i said that we wouldn't necessarily make that determination on our own that we would, you know, work with you and, and, you know, see what you thought of that whole idea. All right. So, Sue, so what I'll do is if you could uh, put those questions that you have together on that particular case uh, to okay. Christine, so we can do a little bit of research before um, we kind of get into a discussion about it, because I know that there may or may not be um, some other issues there. So, um yeah. I'd rather uh, I'd rather get our ducks in a row before we we sit down and talk about it in detail and and hopefully be able to answer some of the questions. Uh, um, sure. You know, I, I uh, think what I can do is I can get them all the bylaw and then uh, maybe highlight some of the things that uh, that uh, she's proposing to change and they they can make a decision on whether or not they want to bring it forward. Um, right. For the next town meeting, you know, and then they'd have to get guidance from council and everything like that. But at least they can have that in front of them and, and work from there. I think that might be best. Yeah. I mean, I'm, OK, I'm not sure that we would. Uh, I, I think, OK, yeah, that's the best idea. I was going to say, I don't think that we should bring it forward unless we've had a conversation with right. planning first. But. Well, I mean, so, I mean, there could also be a citizen's petition in order to move forward if they decided that they wanted to go that route, but yep. Yep. Um, that, for them to decide, it's not necessarily up for the Ag Commission to decide that. So the next meeting is January 8th. That's the first meeting of the year, and that will be um, via Zoom as well. So if uh, you want Christine, to Christine, may yeah. I ask a question, please? I am You and Chris, uh, are you, are we comfortable discussing this because it is in uh, it. It's in litigation, a, and that was yeah. my other question. If we're yeah, you know, it's in litigation. It, it's in litigation now, and I'm not comfortable discussing this at this point. Okay, that's well, my. I, I can ask town, town council if we can. Please ask town council first. Yeah. Okay. Before before because I'm not comfortable discussing it. Okay. Yeah, and that was a question that I had as well. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, in a, any other issues that you have, Sue, if you could put, throw those on um, on a note to Christine uh, so we can put it in the agenda so we can, you know, get a little better background and and try and discuss the topics that you have with a little bit more, uh, um, a little bit more of a clarity. Education. Yeah, a little clarity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Cool. Okay. That's thank you. Question. Something like this also. Yeah, go ahead. Be, we, we have to notify the public if we're going to discuss something like this. Right. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, I, I'm with Margaret, uh, equally uncomfortable until told otherwise by council based on what I know about at the ZBA and the litigation process. But I do have a question as far as Sue's approach to us. Is is the question specific to this project? Or are we really looking to change something that's going to affect the overlay? I think How, it's- How's this pointed it was, at us? Um, it was something that would change the language as it applies to the overlay. You're correct. Yeah, that's that's going to be difficult if uh, yep. I, really. Yep, I agree. OK. Is that it, Sue? Um, actually, can I switch my hat at this point? Um, if if you if, I don't know how long your agenda is and and if you would take up any new business tonight, but um, 
I was hoping that at some point, and I can stay on, and if you're, if you'll um, open it up for discussion, um, the meeting that we had uh, concerning the the um, the old police station. So I, mm -hmm. I do have that under planner's report. So um, that'll be just in a few minutes. We'll discuss it. Uh, they'll okay. make a determination on. I, you know, I was going to just notify them of our meeting. So if you want to just listen for that piece of it, sure. Give them a few first okay absolutely thank you you're welcome and uh let's see uh, mr delgado can you hear me now joe, joe. delgado nope all right we're gonna move on christine um so where were we we're on item number seven for your information the first thing is the Zoning Board of Appeals decisions and legal ads. Yep. Um, we have something from the 15th and something from the 29th. I did not bring home copies with me of what they are. Um, I guess they're just the, le the legal ads um, at this point. I, I don't All right. know. Uh, subcommittees? Um, I don't know of any subcommittee meetings. I know that um, SERPED has asked for a thing with regard to the um, their bikeways and some of the trail things that they're looking at across um, a number of cities and towns from like New Bedford over to Fall River um, for January 3rd of um, next year. So I will keep you um, abreast of how that moves. I don't know if any of you have any other committees at this point. We had a CPC committee and we discussed uh... We discussed the police station. We discussed the bike path, which was very, very nice, very good uh, on that and how that's coming along. And uh, waterways uh, about uh, the, the landing and um, trying to put some new uh, structures in for canoes and kayaks. So we did that at CPC. A vote was taken at CPC um, to um, regarding the police station and whether they wanted uh, a letter of recommendation to the select board that it should be uh, monies should be given for planning and the vote was four to two and that was our meeting four to two four the um Serped was uh, pretty interesting they they had someone come in and discuss a uh, grant program for uh, the South Coast, uh, Bristol County, and Rhode Island uh, for some pretty substantial federal funding for uh, innovative product manufacturing and um, development um, when it comes to um, the ocean cluster in New Bedford and um, the wind project and, and a few others. So I actually forwarded uh, the link to uh, someone that I know at UMass that's that's working with some companies locally, some small small manufacturers in the robotics area. Um, so uh, I'm going to have him take a look at that. But I'll um, I'll get that that link and forward it to you. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, and then um, I attended a uh, what are they? Let's go, Christine. This I don't know if you saw this. The um, Oh, uh, the Citizens Planning Training Collaborative. Did you see the one that they did on site plan review? Uh, well, it was tonight. So it was from six o'clock. So I was watching that from six till seven. Um, but the um, the guy that put that on actually did a pretty nice job and laid it out and what some of the issues are, some of the, some of the legal issues. Um, when to deny, when not to deny, um, how to deny, which is probably most important if need be. Um, but the fact that uh, that most of them are approval with conditions and went through a bunch of different scenarios. So I got the PDF and I'm going to have them send me a link to that uh, particular okay. video. And I'll Great. forward that to everybody so you can take a look at it. Thank you. you. Know, Usually I get emails from them when they have things coming up, but I haven't received one in a while. So maybe yeah. see it only yeah. came through the SERPED meeting. Uh, it, there was a list of, of different um, agenda items in one area, and, it, and I just kind of saw it. 
So yeah. they didn't really promote it. I just kind of saw it on the screen. And so I'll, I, I've i got that. I'll forward it all out to you. Because um, we have a bunch of uh, site plan review things, I think, that are going to be uh, moving ahead after the first of the year. And, and I asked, I did ask them a couple of questions. So hopefully it was videoed. Uh, well, it was videoed. So we, we should be able to hear the questions being asked and some of the answers for a couple of particular cases, not cases in particular, but um, generally the concept of some of the issues that we've had on some of the, um, the, the reviews. Uh, so hopefully he was able to get into those and break them out for us a little bit. Um, let me see. We're not in commission. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, and I think, I think that was it. Um, any other um, subcommittee reports? I don't have a subcommittee report, but uh, we, I can either cover it here or under new business. But I, I also sit on the the Dartmouth Broadband Committee, um, and we have a new website called DartmouthFiber.com. And that will be promoting uh, a questionnaire regarding people's broadband use. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the committee has been formed to evaluate uh, the feasibility of, of Dartmouth providing its, its own broadband service uh, as a, a, a higher, higher, more reliable bandwidth uh, offering that costs less than uh, the present options. Really? So I would encourage people to go to dartmouthfiber.com. What's the time frame on that, Kevin? When are they going to start really getting into that one? Uh, I'm, a, I'm actually ahead of the game uh, from the standpoint that it is uh, it is open, but uh, we, we haven't kicked off the official marketing campaign yet, but I, I just did, I guess. Um, okay, well, that's great. So uh, you know, pricing we, difference? we have a consultancy that we've selected we have uh, uh, money that has been budgeted and approved by uh, town meeting to uh, to study the feasibility, um, and uh, you know the more responses we get to to this uh, uh, questionnaire, the 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 uh, better we can make decisions moving forward about uh, whether it's going to make sense or not to uh, to go to a next step. Okay. Good. We look forward to seeing it. Um, Christine? So for the planner's report, um, the first thing was the accessory dwelling unit discussion. Um, if anybody has any other comments, we've only received one set of comments so far. Um, so for the, the survey, the response thing. Um, so we'll look at this after the first of the year. But realistically, if you want it to be on the spring um, town meeting, we got to just we got to start the, the, the year off. Um, in order to get this moving so we can get something to Brian to have something reviewed. So um, if this is something that you really want to pursue, we're going to have to really kind of hustle on it. Um, I will send out the thing that um, Margaret had sent this afternoon. It was um, kind of sent with, with that for the accessory dwelling units because, you know, the accessory dwelling units, while we were kind of thinking it was going to just apply to one thing, I mean, realistically, it'll, there is an opportunity that will be used for a couple of different things. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. on that, I, I like if um, in, and I've been back and forth with mine like three or four times. I did have a chance to to see Margaret's comments on hers, and I think we're we're probably all going to have a, a bit of a consensus on on what we'd like to see on these things. So uh, if you could go back and look at the email that you got from Ross on the um, the ADUs and take a look at that and just mock it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything great. But I'd really like to kind of get a consensus before we get into January and um, and get something done for January on the topic, if we could. Um, I think, you know, I, I think we're close. There's, there's not a lot of tweaks that, that can be done to it. Um, but I, I think there, you know, there may be some size uh, changes that we could make. Um, parking a uh, little bit more as of right. Uh, so we'll, let's see if we can get them all in. I'll, I'll do mine in the next couple of days and get those into Ross also. So we can, we can finally get some movement on that. I think it's important. I think we were all pretty close anyway, and on the same page. So um, the next thing was the historical, uh, the police, police station discussion. So um, as Ms. Gugucci had um, kind of alluded to, we met um, last week 
to kind of just get a feel from a couple of members of the historical commission um, with regard to what their take is on that particular property. Um, we don't have it as a formal discussion item on this to discuss. Um, that being said, she is on tonight and you know I, I, it'll be up to you to how you want to entertain it. But basically the historical commission is looking um, to get some report, uh, some letters of support from other other boards and commissions if they feel um, interested in um, in uh, saving and converting the the police station. Um, you know, as Margaret said, it's on the it was on the CPC. Um, some money has been allocated, and I think the select board is also doing. They've allocated some money for some feasibility study. Um, they're potentially looking at the property with the, with the building gone and um, and then also with the building in another use. Um, the uh, what is interesting when you go back through and you look at the um, the bylaws that are available online, and I would recommend that you go back to the the planning board site to get that right from the zoning bylaws and the general bylaws right there as opposed to some that are on some of the other pages because they refer to it with the old numbering and things like that. Um, the historical commission um, does get an opportunity to review the way the legislation is written. Um, they get an opportunity to review um, proposed reuse of, of certain sites that are taken down um, and demolition. So that is kind of an, an unusual thing, but it is in the in the bylaws. And so you might all want to just take a look at that. So that's their reasoning for their looking at how the property is going to be reused. Um, and then they also in that um, uh, those bylaws, there is discussion of not only the actual structure, um, the historical significance of the structure from a physical point, but also from a historical point. And they don't necessarily have to prove that, um, you know, it's, it's a certain style of architecture from a certain time and it, you know, or it represents a certain, um, you know, grouping of, of historical structures, but they're talking about, they, they can also look at it from um, like a historical, what it meant to a community or something like that. So the bylaw is a little bit different um, from from many others that I've seen in the past. Um, I don't know what else Chris wants to say. Or if you want Sue, to Sue do you want to, um, uh, for the benefit of the members, uh, bring them up to speed as kind of concisely as you can to uh, to give them an indication of where, where you are in the process? Sure. Um, not only it's not only the historical commission, but we've kind of formed a, a subcommittee, which have other people that are interested in in just exploring the possibilities for that for that building. Um, because from what we've seen so far, it's 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 still it's still a town asset. Um, we've had a, um, a a builder go in there and look at it with us, and he. Um, estimates that the value of the building is at least a million dollars, just the way it is. So what we we had asked the the um, CPC for ten thousand, so we could do a little bit of more investigating as far as environmental and structural assessments, and the. Um, the select board chose not to approve the funding. Um, they wanted to be involved, which we were more than happy to do and collaborate with them. The only thing is, is that in the in the, the collaboration process, it didn't really work out that way. But what I will tell you is we've gotten a letter of support, as Margaret stated from CPC, and we most recently have a letter of support from the finance committee. Um, and basically what we would like to do is just go back and have a consultant look at it um, to see what, if there are any serious um, environmental issues um, 
and also structural because if it's not if we can't look at it from those two angles then it wouldn't make sense to repurpose it for affordable housing and because of all of the the looking through the master plan and how important affordable housing is now on the scene in all um, the communities, um, it makes the most sense, we think, to utilize it for affordable housing, but we're not quite there yet. So basically what we're looking for from the planning board is a letter of support just to continue to not, from both committees, they have they have recommended that the select board um, delay the demolition and to move forward with the environmental and structural assessment. Now, it, the the total assessment amount uh, was what? It wasn't the, ten thousand, right? No, it it well from what we knew from we have somebody on the historical commission that's done a lot of um uh restoration work and she had mentioned that the just the environmental assessment would run somewhere in the in the vicinity of 1800 to 3200 just environmental and the the when when the select board asked Sean McGinnis about that he quoted a price of 50,000 which is very different from what we've been hearing. So um, the select board, uh, that was a tie vote when they wanted to approve the, the, the 46,000. Um, when we initially met with them, when they were willing to collaborate, um, they had asked Sean to put together a package for the scope of work, which that was the price that he gave them of 50,000. And we never got to see what he came up with for this package. So um, they're not, they're not really, um, they're not in the spirit of things. They're not really in the spirit of collaboration. So um, we're trying to get some additional information, but the demolition delay will be, the deadline is coming up in the middle of January and we want to extend it by at least a year so that we have time to explore all these other avenues. Uh, Nick, I think you had a question. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Um, I have a few questions and Quite frankly, they're part in part to educate myself, but at the same time, I have a few points to make. Historically, what part of that building has historical significance? Is it a wall? Is it the basement? I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, I'm being honest. What part of that structure is historically significant? The There are a couple of additions in there but the basic structure, which you can't see because of the stucco, that was the that was a town hall. Prior to the prior to the time that it became a police station, right. So we had that town hall. Plus, you have the town hall that DCTV is DCTV, in. Yep. So another question that I have for you that's a little bit puzzling for me. And it's not puzzling between you and I, it's just puzzling overall. We we removed an entire police department because of Legionnaire's disease, which approximately 10% of the cases can be lethal. Most of them require hospitalization, treatable, but we removed them because of Legionnaire's. We put them on a two lane road that's probably the most condensed two lane road in the whole town. We didn't even put them on Route 6 in an effort to evacuate the building. And now we're talking about preserving the building. What room is there for environmental exploration in comparison to a waste of time, stalling tactic and or waste of town's money. In other words, has anything changed in the forecast of the quality of that environment since they left or the decision that was made to vacate the building? Okay, two things. 
I'll explain one of them in terms of the Legionnaires. The, there's technology now that did not exist in 2014 or 2015 that can eradicate it, but that's not the issue as far as the repurposing of this building, because as I understand it from a number of people, developers, uh, builders that I've spoken with, all the HVAC and all the plumbing will be, remo will be removed. So that's sort of a non-issue. Um, if you look at, there was a feasibility study done in 2017 or 2018 by, the by an architectural firm for the town. And they actually said there were three, they came up with three different scenarios, an A, B, and a C. The A was to do a pretty simple renovation. B was like another step up. I think it went from 5 million to 8 million. And then the third was, I believe the relocation um, to um, Tucker Road. So, but, sure. and, and, the, and the committee, that was that reviewed those three scenarios chose B. So they essentially didn't even do what the recommendation was. And then of course, that was followed pretty quickly by the COVID. So then that all fell apart and that's why it's been sitting there. Understood. The, the last question I have, um, when you reference affordable housing, um, are, are you referencing affordable housing as it relates to our obligation to the state and where we are numerically or above and beyond? In other words, conceptually affordable housing, even if it exceeds, uh, even if we exceed what we need to provide as a town? Well, I mean, I think we, we need to exceed it, but just to, I, I mean, you're probably more familiar with the numbers than I, but as we understood it, we were supposed to get to 183 with Reed Road, it's 144, so there's a difference there. This building, um, the, the police station can accommodate somewhere between 10 and 12 units of affordable. So that would you know, get us closer to the 10%. And, your... and I'm sorry. No, sorry, I was about to say much appreciated, but go ahead, sorry. Um, the, and now there's so much funding coming down from the state um, on the affordable housing end of things. I mean, I would think that it would be, at this point, we should probably be you know, seriously looking at that. If in fact this building is, you know, that the situation can be, can be feasible as far as spending the money or getting a developer to spend the money. Sure. No, I thank you. I thank you. Um, honestly, most of these questions and answers were educational on my part, so I thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I, I have a question for Sue, uh, which I'm confused about. Um, Sue, did they not do a uh, an inspection for um, environmental problems when they closed the police station down? Wasn't that yes, done? That's did. one question. The second question is, has uh, the town, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, has the town had a uh, certified appraiser go into that building and give the town his estimate, a commercial appraiser, on what well, that building's worth as it stands today? Well, that would that's great, but somebody's got to spend the money, and I can't take it out of my savings account, which I'd be, you know, I, that's that's silly. Um, we would have to ask, we would either have to use some of the funds that the select board thinks we can spend or out of free cash or, um, or get somebody to do it pro bono, which is another option. But so far we haven't made much progress other than- but The $10,000 $10, that the CPC uh, initially gave you, you can't, you haven't been able to use, you haven't been able to touch. No, because they asked us to go to the select board for approval to use that to to use okay. that money, huh? and the select board turned us down. Okay. Yeah. 
but there was there was something done uh, prior uh, when yep. when you closed when the building was closed down, wasn't there? Yes, there are two things that were done. There was the feasibility study, and there was also an air quality study. And I can get that to anybody who's interested in looking at it. Thank you. You're welcome. And so the, you the, do, the, the air um, quality study was done by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Okay. Are, are the plans on the table for both the old police station and the old town hall? Or is it solely, is the discussion solely for the old police station? Just the old police station, because that's what they're, that's, it's under the threat of demolition. That's why we're involved. So they have no plans to, to do any um, demo to the DCTV no. building? No, none. Thank you. So my, my personal opinion is, from what I can see, I, I think the disconnect occurred Back in 15 or 16, when the when the other study was done by uh, Lee and Associates, uh, when they gave the options of, OK, what do we do with this police station? Uh, but it pertained mostly to what do we do with the police officers and the operation of the police station? Um, and once the decision was made to move that and leave this building as is, I think that an opportunity was missed at that point to use some town funds to do a commercial appraisal on that building. Um, and maybe maybe there was less of a, a, an appetite to do something because of the Legionnaires um, situation back then. But but knowing what we know now, you know, I think Dave Tattlebaum came up with a, a pretty good option on, um, on how to handle it, which would be to go to market and let the market um, decide exactly what that building's worth. And if, and if it, uh, is worth a certain amount, then uh, we sell it to a developer and see what they can do with it. Um, and then we, we put that money back in the general fund um, and pay some other bills with it. But to leave it languishing like this doesn't, I don't think helps anyone. Um, I think some of the issue is in people's minds is Dartmouth now is the historic commission or the, um, the subcommittee going to be a developer with the town's money. I think that's where some people are going to balk and they're going to say, well, wait a minute, we, we don't want to spend, you know, seven, eight million dollars or whatever the figure is. I'm not sure what the figure would be to, to build 10 or 12 units there. Um, so maybe the housing authority uh, has a little bit more expertise in that area. They have more uh, connections with the people in Boston, with the um, tax credit community that they may be able to pull something together. Um, and use it under the housing authority's purview. Um, I th maybe that's an option. So I think and, I have and actually we are planning to meet with both the housing authority and the housing partnership. Yeah. But we're kind of chipping away at this because I've had at least two weeks out of this month where I've had a meeting every day mm -hmm. dealing with this issue, and I have no plans to take this on as part of the historical commission nor does anybody else. But I will, um, as will other members of the commission, um, try and usher this forward so we can make the best decision for the town. Right. And, and right. definitely, and you're, and you're correct in thinking that we need to have these conversations with, um, with housing for sure. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I'm I'm curious. I'm curious what the members feel about the allocation or the or the recommendation that the funds be expended on uh, another another study, or is it a, a commercial appraisal really that they need um, to bring an idea of whether there is some commercial development viability left in this building? So, Chris, uh, I, I think it was before you were on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, this came before us, and it may have been before Margaret was on the board. Um, the neighbors came before us, and they're, they're highly concerned of what's going there. Uh, we were being encouraged by the select board to include that parcel in the neighborhood business district, which is across the street from it, where it includes 
Cumberland Farms. Mm -hmm. um, th this piece of property is not in it. And one of the problems that we have with this piece of property is the we're, we're stuck between a rock and a hard spot because the cost of demoing a site that size is going to make a cost per unit so astronomical that it, it's it's not a, it you know it's it's not relevant because yeah, you only have the ten or twelve units yeah um well that that would be you know for let's say a condo complex a you know single family residential dwellings the neighbors have made it clear that they do not want to see that part of commercial added to the commercial product uh, piece. Um, but to sell it to a developer and, and allow them to do like kind building for the district, um, you know, let's forget about the, the two acre zone and let's, let's cut it down to quarter acre zone. And um, you just, you're not going to get the squid, the number of, of properties that will make it, even if we gave the property to somebody for free. By the time they remove the, the station and do the site work, it's going to be, you know, each lot is going to be two, three, four hundred thousand dollars per lot for, before you even put a two by four. Up. Um, and you're also, talking about uh, renovating the current structure, though, Kevin. You, you raise the current structure. And I, I believe we're going to run into the same issue that we ran into on Anderson Way with the Dartmouth Housing Authority. The cost per unit for building new or renovating, you're going to be looking at cost per units of three, probably four to 500,000 per unit to renovate that. Um, so we're really stuck in, we're really stuck. So do we spend money to try to, to see if those numbers, maybe my numbers are off and maybe we could get 12 units in that building and they'd be $300,000 per unit. Um, we're, we're really in a tough spot, the town and now the planning board's being asked, you know, what, what their opinion is. So it's not something we can just say yes. You know, it's almost like we should do a little bit more research um, to see what is best to utilize that property. Mm -hmm. Sue? Can I just say that there is a, a project that has been taken on affordable housing project in New Bedford at the, at the former Holy Family High School. Same size, same similar number of units. So, and they've been able to, to work through it. So, and I don't believe that those affordable units will be going for 300,000. I, I, I'm, I don't believe they will, but. I, I think, I think Kevin was referencing the construction cost per unit. Okay, exactly. Not, no, I mean, I'm not assuming the that the housing authority would not be reselling, right? We wouldn't no. be, right. we would not be condoizing that building. In yeah. reselling With the tax the credit building. programs, you're probably right, Kevin, between four and 600,000. You know, and, and don't forget that that is a flood zone. So flood insurance will come into play or flood, right. um, you know, at least building standards will come into play. Right. Um, definitely hurricane proof windows, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. um, part of me is saying <laughs> we need to bulldoze out as quickly as possible, fill it in and add it to Crapo Field and make it our, our you know, our recreation area is a little bit larger in that area. Is there an aquifer um, zone there too, Christine? Is that within the aquifer zone? I don't think so. I'm looking at that right now. No. I don't no. think so. No. And just so I don't know if you if any of you have been in the interior of that building, we had gone in there after three straight days of rain and it was dry. So I mean we're gonna Hopefully, we're going to get to go in <clears throat> within the next few days to to confirm that. But there was no mold, and there was, and it was not wet. 
And if you want to read um, Ron DePippo's report um, about the condition of the building the day we went in, it's on the Historical Commission webpage. Uh, <clears throat> I want to add, add to my comment about the Aquifer Protection District. It comes really close to it, to Zone yeah, 3, but it's, not, but, yes. it, but it's not in it. Right. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Any other comments, Sue? I don't think so. I just, th you know, the I'll, uh, the one thing I will leave with you is that the finance committee is not inclined to um, sell that property, just so that you're aware. But mm -hmm. that's that was part of their discussion. I'm just sharing it with you. Yep. Well, I, I think personally, I'd like to make a couple of calls to different, uh, a few different people in order to um, to feel more comfortable about uh, about some type of letter um, being sent out. But uh, I'll defer to my members. I can send anything? you the letter that we received from. Um, well, that would be helpful. CPC. Yep. Yeah, if you could send the letters of support that you have so far. Um, we can share that with the membership and maybe bring it up at the next meeting and discuss whether uh, whether we need to make a, a more formal stance with you um, and then do a little bit of research in the interim um, okay. on how we feel individually about it. But, uh, you know, you, you can't take it away from you. You know, we have to appreciate the fact that you are doing this and the Historic Commission is, is not looking to develop that lot. They're looking to... Um, take care of the town and make sure that the town gets what it can from that particular site. So I appreciate that, you know, individually, I think you're doing, uh, you're doing the right type of work for the town and, and we appreciate, and I appreciate that for sure. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to move forward uh, in doing a little bit more research and. And, and anything it. that, anything that comes up in the interim, um, mm -hmm. I will, I'll share that information with you. That would be great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you, Sue. Thank You're you, welcome. Sue. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Christine, the calendar? Um, yeah, so um, you just need to let me know before the next um, the next meeting whether or not you want me to put something formal on the agenda if you're thinking as we get, go through this, um, something that if you're going to vote in some way or whatever. So the last thing on the um, this tonight's agenda is the, um, the calendar. We had sent it to you all. Um, uh for the year um i've left it at two meetings um we can go through 2025 march of 2025 right now with the online zoom thing i did get zoom um uh zoom uh meetings worked out for the whole year michelle helped me with that and dc tv um so it's pretty straightforward um there did you send that to us already yeah the, that was part of, yeah i can send it again yeah it's so in the, la the last page, if you look. It's the last page of our agenda. I can send it separately if you want as well. No, um, that's okay. If I can grab it off here, I'll just grab it. Yeah. yeah. So the oh, first meeting is the 8th. Um, January. There are one or two months toward the end of the year that maybe have one meeting just because of the way holidays fall and whatever. And then the other thing we work around is town meetings because we don't typically have a meeting the night before town meeting. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know what? It was it was at the end of the ZBA, so right, I just at the end. assume that it was in the ZBA still. Um, okay. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So that'll um, be up on that'll be up on the planning board webpage and. Um, okay. Good. Okay. All right. Anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. Motion made. I'll second, second that. Okay. All right, Kevin, second staff. Um, Margaret Sweet. Yes. Kevin Mello. Yes. Uh, Kevin Estes. Yes. Dyke Paytas. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, but yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Same to you. Uh, ah, humbug. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, um, Merry Christmas, forget, everybody. A couple, we'll send out a thing that you have a couple of uh, signatures to help us with, and uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, sounds so good. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Great night.